Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to integrate a tree image into this uh, into this background. We're going to use Nuke's 3D tools to aid the composite by adding what I hope will be a plausible shadow. So I'll just begin by just taking a quick look at the uh, at the project settings. This image that I've brought in is 1280 by 720. I've just created. Uh, I've just set the uh, the project settings to uh, to to align to that in the format. Okay. And then in my node settings, I've got uh, this this image connected to a viewer. I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-grade this background. It's a little bit saturated, so I'm just going to put a color correct node into here. So I just tap there and start to type in color correct until it appeared. There is a, a quick key which is C, which will bring this up, and I'm just going to bring the saturation down a little bit. You know, do forgive the limited space that's available in the screen capture software. Just maybe just lower the contrast down a little bit as well. That's looking a little bit better. Okay. So we'll now take a look at the tree image that we're going to put into this. Uh, you can see here it's a it's a PNG image. If you look at the tabs, you can see it's a four-channel image. We've got the red, green, blue, and the alpha channel. I'm just going to hook the viewer up to this, and we can take a look. Okay. The image is looking quite funky, and there's uh, there's really two reasons for this. Uh, first, uh, first thing that that we see is all the um, all the coloured pixels around the boundaries of the tree itself are all smeared, and this is due to the resolution and the aspect ratio uh, being different in the tree to it is in the uh, in the project settings of the uh, of the script. Okay, and the other thing, which is the white background, which uh, which is maybe surprising given that uh, we know that this has got a, an alpha channel, um, but this is. This is because the image that we're bringing in as uh, an unpre-multiplied alpha that we'll need to sort out. But if I just flip over to the alpha channel there, you can see that there's a perfectly good alpha in this image. Okay, so it stands to reason then that we need to pre-multiply this image. So in goes a pre-mult node. We can now see that uh, we've, we've got a good image now in the RGB channel and the alpha channel. So if you're putting in your own image or, or your own video sequence, Bear in mind that this has got to have an alpha channel. Now that um, alpha channel could be generated as a pre-matted element, as it has been in this particular case, or it could actually be generated within new, for example, by keying or by rotoscoping. Okay, so let's just quickly add a merge node into this and just pipe the two together, so we can actually take a look at this image in the um, in the as a, as a composite, even though it's a, a very early composite. And we can see that we're going to need to do some color correction on that tree. But before we go any further, it's important to give consideration to uh, to to any element that we bring in from a from a source, as in the, as in this particular case, a stock image, to make sure it's actually going to integrate properly with the shot. Uh, my intention is to put this tree, is to scale it down and put it into this space here where the shadows, just beyond the shadow that's being cast by this dominant tree here on the left hand side. Okay. So we need to look at this with, in relation to the rest of the shot. So we can see the shadows coming across here from left to right. So we can clearly see that the that the that the the dominant light source is over is coming from the left. And we can see that in this tree. We can see that the the leaves on the left side of the image are being illuminated, and the ones on the right side are being cast into darkness. And that corresponds with this tree. So it's going to be okay. If it was the other way around, then we may be able to flip the image. Uh, which uh, you know, which is a possibility, and we and we could give consideration to that. Um, but even if this doesn't work, you know, we may have to consider replacing the image if it's a if it's a uh, a photographic image, or um, or re-rendering it if it's a um, with a, a re with a redirected light if it's coming from a CGI source. Okay, so we 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 know that this tree is okay, which is fortunate given that I selected it for this tutorial. Okay, so. I'm going to put a color correct node. Just type C there to bring up a color correct node, and I'm just going to do a few alterations here to um, to to make this tree look a little bit more like this tree on the uh, on the left hand side. Okay, so I'll just start by getting it. I'll do all this in the master channel. Um, I'm just going to bring open up the gamma settings, and I'm just going to use this to uh, to try and recolor this a little bit. Uh, this at the moment has a little bit too much red in it, so I'm just going to bring the reds down a little bit. So it's making, it's introducing cyan, which is probably making it a little bit blue, and then we can bring in some yellows by lowering down the 
uh, loading down the blues. Okay. Uh, that looks a little bit luminous at the moment, but if I now sort of bring down the, the gain. Okay, it's still looking. Whoops. Forgive me, it's very fiddly inside this small screen capture space. So I'll just pull my node tree down a little bit to give me a bit more space. Okay, I can always come back and fix these later on. I just wanted to get it somewhere somewhere near initially. I think also I'll just look to desaturate it a little bit. That might that'll make quite a bit of difference. Okay, and then just gain down a little bit more. Alright. It's it's not there yet but it's, it's a little bit better than it was. So uh, I'm going to leave it for now. I can always come back at the end. Once this, is, this tree is in place, I can always come back and make some finer adjustments to this. Okay, so I think I can turn my attention to the, uh, to the shadow now. So I'm just going to disconnect that merge. We'll come back to that later, but uh, for now, we'll just leave that out. And we'll come over to our tree and we're going to now use the 3D uh, the 3D space in in Nuke, in Nuke to uh, to get this uh, get this, uh, this this shadow working with this tree so i'm just going to uh, tab and type a card and i'm going to put this onto a card which you'll see immediately flips me over into Nuke's 3D space okay and we can see our tree applied to the card and we can see the pre-multiplied alpha giving us a transparency uh, across the card apart from on the areas that we want obviously so there's our there's our card I think what we're also going to do now is we're going to create a card for our uh, for our shadow so I'm just going to repeat that process and give myself another card and pipe that in over here okay it'll get a little bit tight later on when we start to do work on the on the shadow itself but the first thing that I'm going to do with the second card I'm just going to type one there just so that we only have our active car, uh, active node properties available and I'm just going to come down to the rotation and we and I'm going to actually lay this down flat which means I'm going to rotate it on its X so I'm just going to set that down to um, minus 90 which will lay it down flat okay so I now just need to use the viewports just to broadly align the um, align the, the tree and the shadow so I'll just come into the the front view first of all and get my uh, get my, my card for my, my actual tree and I'm just going to bring it back up and I'm going to use the the grid lines on the on the comp viewer just to sort of get that that base there it makes sense to be able to align these at the base Okay, let's come over onto one of our side views, get our second card, and um, let's bring that across to that same point. Okay, and let's take a look now in the in the 3D view how they're panning out. Okay, th this tree's the wrong way around, so let me come back to this second card change the rotation from minus 90 to 90 and now we've got the shadow and the car and the and the main tree sort of broadly aligning we'll we'll be making some changes to this later on but that'll uh, that'll that'll do for now okay if I do if I just click to deselect my card nodes and come into this you can see it looks anything but a shadow at the moment but I'll leave it like this for now because it'll it'll make it easier for us to uh, with the with the alignment and it'll make it easier for us to see when we actually uh, get this back into the 2D environment. So to get that process underway, I need to get these these 3D nodes back into a 2D environment. So to do that, I'm going to add a scene node. I'm going to add a scanline renderer, and I'm going to add a camera. Okay, so I'll connect up my scanline render, my, my viewer to my scanline renderer. Um, my two cards need to come into this scene, and then the camera into the scanline renderer. Okay, this will now enable me to see this in in two D. Um, 
Well, that's interesting. That uh, that would explain quite a bit. I've actually got this scene flipped around, so let me just quickly change this. So I'll actually come back to my second card. I thought I was right first time. I was a bit baffled by that, so I'll just flick that back to minus 90. And then come back into my into my side view with my my floor card and just bring that down so we align back up as I said that's better as I said we're gonna we're gonna need to come back and change these later on but for now we'll just leave it like that so I'm just gonna whoops let's get the camera and pull the camera back just zoom out so we can see this a little bit better Okay. What I'm essentially looking to do now is get the um, is get the the camera looking at the tree and the shadow within its range of view. So I'll just pull that up a little bit and maybe just rotate it a tad, up it a little bit more. I can switch over and look at it through the camera view now, and maybe just use the manually manually adjust the the settings. So just start to traverse back a little bit in Z and then pull down a little bit more in Z. Maybe just up a little bit now in, in, on, in Y. Okay, so that's got my tree in frame uh, from the camera's perspective. So let's merge this back over the, over the background and take a look at our first attempt at this comp. So I'll just um, hook this up. Just use a dot node just to align these uh, these pipes a little bit, and we can see our tree in in situ. It's clearly in the wrong position, um, and also the shadow is nowhere near. Uh, it looks wrong altogether, and it's nowhere near pointing in the direction that it's going to need to. But we've got a we've got a foothold now. So let's start by going somewhere to making our, uh, our 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 shadow actually look like a shadow. I'm just going to stretch down this and I'm going to put a grade node on the shadow itself so I'll just type G to bring up a grade node and I find the easiest way to tint to get a black to get a black tint on 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 these is just to take the black point to a value of 1 and we can see now that that's gone completely black if we look at the other shadows in the in the scene you can see that they're heavily blurred uh, and also they're semi transparent so they're allowing some of the background color to come through none of those are in situ yet uh, but we can do something about that as we go along the way. So just to, just as a start, I'll just add in a blur node and whack up the blur, and we can see how I can control that. Okay, so I'm just going to put push that up somewhere around about there, and then I'm just going to disable it for now, because it's certainly going to be easier for us to align this uh, shadow while we're uh, while we can actually see it a little bit in a little bit less of a diffuse state. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some uh, repositioning and rescaling of this tree, uh, so that it, uh, it it better aligns within uh, within this image, sort of compositionally. So to do that, I'm just going to extend down these, and I'm going to add a transform geo node below the scene. So because it's below the scene, it'll affect both the uh, both the background card and the uh, and the card, the upright tree card. Okay, so what I can do now. Is I can start to reposition using the using the transform geo node. I can start to position. So I'm just going to start to transform the tree back. As I said, I'm aiming to get it into this space here, just um, uh, just on the right side of the road, just in the area where the uh, where the shadow isn't being cast by the big tree on the left. So maybe somewhere around about there. Um, let's just click up just click away from that so I can see it clearly. It's it's on the road. I think it needs to go back a little bit further as well. Then it, I need to just traverse it over, not that much, just by fine adjustments. Let's have a look at that. Mm, needs to go back a little bit more than that. And let's just bring it back to a little bit closer to the to the side of the road, and then we'll bring down the scale and make it look because this is clearly a young tree. So, okay, now I've pushed it. Now I've pushed it back too far. So I'll just get 
like this and just bring this back. Now you notice that I'm actually traversing this in Z, so I'm actually pushing this away from the camera. I'm not actually raising it up and down on the Y axis at all. Okay. So let's say that we're happy enough with the position as it is there. It's maybe still a little bit big for but for the purposes of the um, of the tutorial I'll I'll leave it at this uh, at this particular scale and uh, and comp composite from here. Okay, so let's realign the tree then, so it so or the shadow, so that it uh, so that it, it its alignment matches the the other trees. You can see there that the shadow's coming across more or less horizontally, maybe a little bit slightly towards. So sort of just in this kind of direction. That's what I'm aiming for. So to do that, I'm just going to open up the card node, and I'm going to come down to the skew skew properties of the card node, and I'm just going to start to pull this. Uh, I'm going to take this into negative values. A little bit fiddly this. Certainly, as I as I bring it into sort of this horizontal area, we can see how how, how long the shadow gets. So I may want to bring down the scale of this shadow just so that to keep it plausible so maybe something like that you can always adjust it later on and now we can start to bring in I think also I'll just skew it a little bit on the um, on, on the y-axis just to add a little bit more depth so I'm actually changing the angle a little bit here of the, of the card which is technically not correct but um, is, uh, is gi giving me a little bit more depth to this so I need to get obviously the, the, the trunk of the tree which is over here now I need to get that aligned okay so now I can start thinking about pulling this um, pulling this over and aligning the, the trunk which is over here so I'll just pull this over again tricky within the, the screen capture area Alright, so let's say that we're happy enough with that. So let's just bring up our node tree and undisable our blur. And there we go. So I think the final thing that we need to do is just uh, deal with the transparency. If we look at these these shadows coming across here, you can see that they've got quite a bit of transparency in. At the moment we've got very little transparency coming through this. Okay, So transparency, one of those interesting things that, uh, that confuses quite a few people using, using Nuke. Um, my approach to this is to add a multiply node and use pixel math to uh, to take the opacity down. So in this particular case, brought up the uh, brought up the the multiplication, and now I should be able to use the value and just bring that down a little bit, somewhere like there. So we're kind of working in reverse now with the mix, because what I can do with the mix now is as I mix this down, I'll reinstate opacity rather than transparency. Because uh, because obviously what's happening here is that the the dark values are multiplying over themselves. Okay, so maybe just a down a little bit more. Maybe let's try 0.75, and we'll come out now and we'll take a look at these shadows in comparison. So at that kind of mix, just bring that back a little. Okay, so there we go. Now clearly. From this point on, I can go back to any of my properties, um, any of my color correction properties. Um, I could, you know, maybe would want to desaturate this a little bit further. I can go back to my my shadow and, and maybe adjust that a little bit further, blur it a little bit, skew it a little bit different. So fine tune fine tuning can be done um, at, at this stage quite effectively and quite easily just by uh, just by getting at the individual nodes but that's my way of integrating a shadow into a scene using uh, the 3D uh, the 3D functionality in Nuke and I hope you found this useful